this point of the pond construction, we're gonna take the liner and we're gonna attach it to the skimmer faceplate and give it a waterproof seal. We're gonna show you step by step how to do it so you can breathe easy during the process. Uh, we're gonna show you some tips and tricks along the way, hopefully make your life a lot easier. The first tip that I'm gonna have for you is this is, uh, it's a contractor tip actually. This is our faceplate seal box. We have it in a tote in our truck all the time and if someone's getting ready to do a faceplate seal, they grab the faceplate seal box and they have all the tools necessary to do the job. Um, we're installing the Helix Pond Skimmer today, so the main tools we're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver, a 7 16 nut driver, and then we have an awl inside here so we can poke the holes and find the holes uh, where the bolts have to go through the liner. Now when you get a pond kit, you'll get a tube of silicone for making the attachment. Today we're going to use a polyurethane sealant and a caulking gun. And um, one of the tricks that some people don't know is the caulking gun has a little spout cutter right here. You can stick this guy in, cut the spout, and then they have this cool little nail thing. You stick it in there and break the seal, and then you're, you're good to go on it. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Here we go. As you can see, we have plenty of slack here to make the connection. And what we'll end up doing is I'm going to reserve that slack down below the skimmer in case you know, we wanted to make an adjustment later in the future. So we're going to pull it down like this and get that done down about here. But I'm not going to cut off that extra slack. I'll leave it all down at the bottom. Now, one thing you want to make sure is you want to take that underlayment and get that tucked down low because that's not going to be a, as a part of the faceplate attachment. That can't be in the seal, otherwise it'll leak. First thing I'm going to do is take off all these bolts and then I'll get the area cleaned up. Now that I have the faceplate bars off, I'm just going to do a general cleaning with a towel, wipe off most of the dust that's on here. Once the dust is done, then I'm going to do the initial dry run and we'll get everything fit into place before we break into our sealant. Once we have it across here, we're going to do a dry run with our awl. With the awl, we'll find that top hole. Pull out all the wrinkles once that's in. Sometimes when I do these signature boulders too close, it makes it a little tricky, but well worth it. So that's nice and smooth. I'll get my awl and I'll do the other bar up here. Now, I'll pull this apart, and then I'll do my final cleaning before I put my sealant on. I mainly want all the dust and powder off there. Now we can put on our sealant. So now that these two guide bolts are ready, and I know that I can just put them in place, I'll set these back over here and leave them hanging. 
and I have it all cleaned up now. And what I'll do is I'll come through here and I'll put my sealant on here and then I'll just put that down in there. You don't need a lot on here. You really don't. You see a nice bead. First guide bolt in. Put that first bolt in, then I'll smooth that across. Go for the other guide bolt. Pull out any wrinkles, and then smooth this bottom piece apart, and then I'm ready for the bottom bar. There we have it, nice and smooth. Now I can line up this bottom bar. for the guide hole. And then put this guy through. So now all the bars are on. Now I can just run through and puncture all the holes with my awl and then come back in and run all the bolts through and tighten them up. Once all these bolts are in place, you see I just have them pressed through there. I haven't put any nuts on there. Now I'll come through and guide all the nuts on there. Now once you have all the bolts on here, I'll just come through here and I'll hand tighten all these guys. Once I have them hand tight, then I'll grab 716 nut driver and the Phillips screwdriver and I'll tighten them down kind of like a gasket on a car. Just I'll do each one a little bit, go all the way around the house, and then come back and hit them again. And snuggle up real good. So I've gone around the entire one one time and now I'm going to come through here and give it a more serious tightening. And that should be it. Last couple of tips I want to talk about is just want to make sure you don't have any wrinkles. If you see a wrinkle in there, you're most likely going to have a leak and you want to make sure you don't have any of the underlayment in between this liner and the faceplate. The, the underlayment should be completely moved away altogether. Okay, so I got them all. They all have a, a serious tightening on there. And then I'll come through here with a, a razor blade and then I'll cut the opening.
you get this black polyurethane on your clothes, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to have a stain, that's for sure. So there's that. I'll run through here with my finger. That's a, that's a wrap. Because you see I left some slack here. It's always nice to have slack for future repairs on the pond or remodels or upgrades. So I always leave slack there. A little rock in the face of this nice. So there you have it, the step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the faceplate seal on the Helix Pond Skimmer. It's really simple to do. You know the routine by now. If you have any questions at all, please post them in the comment section below and I'll get to each and every one of them. I'm Eric Triplett, the Pond Digger. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.